Hey y'all, hey, this is Dr. Samira Coda. I'm a licensed therapist and I am obsessed with writing. I'm also a published author. Uh, for those who may be watching this for the first time, um, or I don't know, figuring me out for the first time. <laughs> I have written a lot of books. I've written 87 books. My goal is 100 within the next five to 10 years. Uh, I'm at 87. Um, I'm gonna make that goal, right? I'm gonna make that goal. Uh, writing to, for me is therapeutic. I absolutely love it. Someone asked me on one of my um, social medias, um, can I do something, some type of teaching on how to write and publish? And I will do that. I don't have a time frame for that uh, as of yet. But um, I want to introduce you to my book. It's called A Woman's Grace. Now, this is not book number 80. This is, I think, book number 84 or 5 or something like that. So it's not the, the all the books. Maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe it's 86. I don't know. So I'm going to do something different for the first time. I'm going to read you the back cover of this book. And then I'm going to read you a, maybe a few cha uh, pages somewhere uh, in the book. Okay. But it's called A Woman's Grace. It is available on www.drsamaricolbert.com. You can, avail, uh, it can be, you can pick it up, excuse me, via Amazon. You can pick it up on my website. Uh, it'll be available for ebook and for um, paperback. It's depending upon which one you do. If you Go to my website. You can just choose uh, which one that you want. Okay. All right. So you can see the tan. It's like the second time I did it because I couldn't get through without like tearing up and I had to stop and you know. So I'm gonna do it again. We're not gonna cry on this good internet streets. Okay. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> All right. Ready? Okay. So somewhere along the lines, we are taught it's our responsibility to save everyone, to be the superhero in someone else's story. We are taught and learned to be independent while doing so. We got mixed messages growing up. We are taught to be strong, get educated, get a seat at the table. And so we do just that. Then we are told we're too strong, too educated, too black, too ed too independent. Where were all these opinions when we were struggling? No one comes to help you because you've always been that girl or that woman who figures it out. Truth be told, we get weary and wounded in a state of despair, trying to live up to someone else's expectations of us. In the book of Woman's Grace, Dr. Samara teaches how to retire our superwoman cape, put down the S on our chest, and lean into God's grace as a daughter of the king. We are letting go of false pressure, misguided loyalty, and our white knight syndrome to rest in God's grace. Whew. Did that sound good to y'all? Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to get to this without crying. Because sometimes, um, not only um, when I write a book, I don't just write books from the educational aspect of it or the therapist. I'm like an actual human being who has had my own journey. And sometimes I, in a discreet but professional way, share uh, some of my experiences. And so um, writing is like another form of therapy for me. Now, it does not replace therapy alone, but it is another form of therapy. Uh, for me. So I was like trying to get through this. Okay. All right, y'all ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to start. Um, I did take some snippets from one of the chapters and put it on my back cover. So if anything repeats itself, that's what that is. But um, let me just read the first few pages and then we will be surely done for today. Um, Proverbs 14.1 reads, a wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. I sat there with a colleague of mine who said, Samaria, I don't want to be strong anymore. As I was encouraging her, I remember thinking to myself, neither do I. I can relate so much to the angst in her soul because I had been there. In fact, I was there. I know what it's like to feel as though you have the world on your shoulders. Somewhere along the line, this is where it's going to repeat a little bit from the snippet from the um, description in the back. Somewhere along the line, you were taught it was your responsibility to save everyone uh, or be independent. Do it by yourself. No one comes to help you because you've always been the woman who figures it out. Okay. No one says, can I help you? What do you need? Nope, sis. You figured it out. The, that's the story of my life. You don't know your, you don't know how you'll pay for college, but you'll figure it out. If your car is on the side of the road and you don't have someone to call, you'll figure it out. Your boss is a demonic Jezebel in the flesh, but you can't cry about it because there's no one to cry to. You'll figure it out. You have more bills than money. Figure it out. 
the guy that you kind of like doesn't like you because you're not Becky with the good hair and you don't show up as the damsel in distress who needs to be rescued. Nah, sis, don't figure that one out. But let's be honest, it still hurts like hell. You want a man, but not the type of man that you have to make yourself small to be with. You already feel small in your own heart. Your presence is too much in one circle and not enough in another. You get tired of wiping your silent tears, putting your big girl britches on, and walking through life with your head up and your heart broken. You get tired of having to figure it out. I understand what she was saying because I realized after much pain that I didn't want to be superwoman. I have retired my cape and my S on my chest. Truth be told, I would like to be a soft girl, but life says otherwise. I related so much to my colleague, but I couldn't tell her the discouragement of my own soul. I was there to give her strength, strength that I didn't have. Truth be told, we get weary, wounded, and in a state of despair. Uh, and I talked about, of course, it's repeating how uh, we're taught, get a seat at the table, get educated, struggle, uh, or just survive. But no one ever allows us, particularly black women, we as black women, it's not in the book, we are not taught to be soft. We're taught to survive. And then in that survival mode, you become too much for people. Let me not. <laughs> we can have this discussion later on social media. Listen, I was always shy, reserved, and a bookworm. I didn't have dreams of grandeur, making bunches of money. I just wanted to live a life that I would be pleased with. I didn't graduate from college or get degrees because I wanted to be a career woman. I just learned and needed to survive. College was my way out of poverty and a series of bad circumstances and childhood abuse. I never realized that all the hard work, the struggle, the late nights, the studying, the two jobs, and starting my own business would get me praise and rejection. My accomplishments made me ostracized from the people I knew, but my presence intimidated people who didn't know me. I remember thinking, when is it just, when is just being Samaria okay, and why am I not enough? It is the dichotomy of what it means to be a woman, a black educated woman, you get accused of being a snob in one circle and too much in another. You're too educated, too independent, and too strong. What happens when on the outside you don't need to be rescued, but on the inside people act like they don't see you? What happens when being yourself hurts and no one cares? This book is for you. So it sounds kind of sad, right? But it gives, that's the preface, y'all. It gives you strategies of how to find yourself and be all of you in God. Be the smart little girl that just wants to read books and study. Be the vulnerable little person in you. Be bright, be smart, be intelligent, be good, be bad, be happy, be sad. Be everything that God has created you to be. Lean into who God has called you to be and not what others expect of you to be and if people act like they don't see you or your presence intimidates them and you will know that you are not a derogatory or nasty person that truly is their issue when you lean into god's grace you take off the s on your chest you stop being or trying to live up to other people's expectations and you live in the greatness and the smallness and the good and all the things the in-betweens of who it is to be you you can be happy one day and say i'm on top of the world but i'm scared another day Everything that is you, the good, the bad, the everything in between. The, the parts of you that wants to conquer the world, but the parts of you that just want to go to a movie. Like the parts of you that just wants to, I don't know, lay around and eat ice cream versus the part of you that just wants to like start a bit brand. Like every part of you, God is okay with. And when we learn to lean on God's grace, we stop being what other people want us to be and stop having to have that tug of war of I'm too strong here, but I'm too weak here. Uh, I'm too independent here, but I'm not enough here. Every place and everything that God has called you and ordained for you to be, at the end of the day, you are enough. So this is a woman's grace. I know, I, like I said, I know the first few, I only gave you the first few pages. So of course it sounds a little sad, but that's just the premise. And I know, cause I see clients like this all the time, uh, men and women, believe it or not. Uh, I know that some people can relate to um, this book, okay? All right, y'all. All right. 
um yeah follow me on social media and subscribe to my youtube channel i have another podcast i'm on tiktok i'm on facebook i'm on instagram i'm everywhere y'all <laughs> And of course, www.drsamaricobra.com. That's my website. My um, uh, my therapy website is www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. You must be a North Carolina resident or can get to the state of North Carolina if you want counseling. And of course, I have a training website for leaders called www.trainingchristianleaders.com. Bye. <laughs>